Netlify demo. Uh, I had purported to, to cover much more in this talk, but I'm going to keep it to uh, part one and probably come back for a part two. A bit about me. Uh, this is me at Twitter, at Jeff Marvin. Currently, I'm at Jobber, and I'm working on an open source React component library to uh, swap out the existing de design system. Also, we're hiring, uh, so feel free to talk to me about that. I set out to do this demo because I wanted to learn more about Gatsby. I had also heard a lot about Netlify uh, and was really curious to see how they work together. Uh, this is also going to be my first attempt at live coding, so we'll see how this goes. Very quickly, uh, Gatsby JS, they cover this, this fairly, w fairly well. So it's, they say, fast in every way that matters, free, open source, based on React to build websites and apps. So they have support for PWA. How it works, it's essentially a Jamstack, so JavaScript, APIs, and markup, HTML, CSS. No server component really running it, so it works well with static sites plus JavaScript layered on top. So you're looking at things like data sources being existing CMSs, markdown, static documents, we'll look at that today, and, and data, APIs that are already on the web, JSON, et cetera. Uh, then a build process, which is very automated. So they're building, powering that by GraphQL and pumping that into HTML, CSS, and React, and ultimately deploying. So we'll, take, we'll see what that, that looks like. Uh, I thought th another really interesting aspect of their core philosophy is they really have this vision to create a system that lets developers or website builders work at a higher level than needing to do a lot of code, a lot of tooling, a lot of build systems, a lot of configuration. So they really have a fairly laid out vision about creating something that's a higher level building block uh, to have it work like a content mesh system. So to be able to bring together the disparate sources uh, to, and to make building websites fun. So take a lot of the drudgery out. Uh, also build a better web. So things like support through tooling and configuration for accessibility, for uh, PWAs, et cetera. So all sorts of interesting technologies built right into the philosophy of the project. Uh, there are many cool things about Gatsby that I could tell you about, but I'm going to try to show you and fairly quickly. Uh, this is recorded, so you can come back to it later. I will have this that I tweet out uh, on a repo so you can follow along the steps as well later if you'd like. Uh, and, and I'll make sure that that gets distributed. Uh, so, so I'm going to really start from almost step zero and walk you through everything that you would need to be essentially serving markdown content on a static Gatsby site using Netlify. I'm assuming that you do have Node NPM installed. And then I'm on a Mac OS. Uh, Mac OS, so Xcode CLI tools are often also required. Uh, starting from that point, what we want to do is install the Gatsby CLI tools. Just a, you know, doo -doo -doo -doo. this 30 minutes later after the NPM install finishes. It's not too bad, actually. So we now have the Gatsby CLI tools. This doc shows you they have a very comprehensive set of documents for all of the CLI tools, for tutorials. We're going to use some plugins. And also, they have a concept of starters, which is a kind of a pre-configuration package of all of these different uh, pieces configured for your, whatever your purpose might be. Uh, so now we, we have. Uh, Gatsby CLI tools installed, we're going to use a starter. So like I said, they have these pre-configured packages. I'm going to just use their hello world because intentionally I want to start with something very simple and have you see essentially what uh, w we can build up from there. Uh, but their use case of being you know, very easy to produce uh, a website out of the box for your needs uh, there's a huge, huge amount of starters that might be more applicable to what you're trying to do. So I pasted this in. What this is essentially doing, Gatsby is the command we're saying, or the CLI command. Gatsby, we want a new site. We want to call it Exchange.js Gatsby Demo. And we're going to use as the source for that demo 
their starter, we provide the URL for that. So what we're doing is Gatsby is cloning into this directory the git repo for that starter, installing the right packages, and pretty quick here will return me back to my cursor with all of that installed. Okay. So we have our Exchange Gatsby, de Gatsby demo folder. We take a look inside, we see pretty typical Git repo type things, a readme. We've got some files, we've got a node modules and a source folder. Now we again use the Gatsby command and we say develop. What this will do is launch a server for us. They're doing hot reloading, so any changes we make are going to reload. And we'll run a web server here. Uh, it, it also does a, essentially a build. Actually, this isn't doing a build step, so it will uh, dynamically be creating the assets to serve the file or the website. So we take a look. This is our server running, and this is the, the default. Mm. Ah, okay, this will be interesting. Uh, this is what live coding gets you. Uh, when I pasted in the command, the actual URL uh, for the starter didn't pull the one that I wanted, the hello world. So I think we grabbed a little more than we bargained for. Let's take a look. So this is their, their default starter. I think we can still work with this. And let's look at what the folder structure looks like. OK, so we see, essentially, we have a source folder. And inside that, yeah, we've got a, a whole bunch more here. So I'll just stick to the basics. We have a source folder here. We have pages. And so inside pages, we have an index.js. In this case, we actually have a couple more. We have a 404. We have a page 2. We have other assets, like the image that we see is being served. And we have a whole ton of components being listed here as well. Uh, and, then, and then we've got a uh, public folder, and we'll, we'll see when we go then to, let's just kill the server. Uh, if we wanted to, we can build. And this then prepares our site to be served statically, so without a web server. So what we're doing now is essentially compiling all of the static versions of what we were dynamically serving previously. And if we take a look, we'll see that the public folder now contains the results of that build. And so you'll th see things like uh, maps and JS files prepared to be actually served in a more of a production type environment from a static server. One of the things to mention here is that it is React. So essentially, we're looking at just components. This, these are React components. So our index page is importing some things, React, link, layout, image. So these are other, other pieces that we're getting in from the starter. Uh, and then returning an index page component. And that's what's being rendered via React. Now that we have a repo, let's see how my. Copy pasting is going to work here. Uh, we can push that up to, uh, to GitHub and ultimately Netlify. So I'm going to show you that part. I'm going to create a new repo here on GitHub. I'm going to add that as a remote in my folder here. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay. And then I'm going to push that up. So U. No, upstream. Whoop. This is the one I always get wrong and then just copy paste. There we go. Okay, so now we've got this on. Uh, on GitHub. So from GitHub, Netlify will essentially automatically watch this repo and just serve that up for us. Uh, so here we just say new site from Git. Netlify makes this fairly straightforward. There is an auth step there that you would have to do if you hadn't yet. I can search for exchange. Oh. Uh, if your repo isn't here, then essentially in your permission wise, you need to tell GitHub that that's okay. So we tell GitHub that that's okay, give Netlify access. Netlify does have a lot of resources to actually work with a whole team of developers if you wanted to. Uh, and and that's, it's this easy now we say deploy this site. Uh, so, so now Netlify is going to deploy. We can see the script here if we'd like. It's going to also automatically pick up the fact that it's a Gatsby site and do the build step. But you can also have more specific instructions about that if you'd like. We're going to give that, it takes about a minute to do. Uh, what I'm going to do here is just show you. We'll change something in the site. We should now if I should be finishing here. I think it's taking a little longer because we had the uh, not the hello world site. Uh, so and, and essentially what it will do is automatically pick up the next deploy every time I merge to master. OK, so the site is live. So it's about a minute. We see we've got a site. This is our, our Gatsby site. Uh, I'm going to add the changes I just made. Hastily. Push that up. We're going to give this a minute. I'm going to keep going to the next step, but we'll see essentially in about a minute. And I can see that this has started. You see already it's picked up. Netlify has picked up that there has been a new push a minute later, and it's going to build that on my behalf. Again, fits really nicely into the perspective of very quickly being able to deploy a site out. And Netlify also has a number of things that make Netlify and GitHub's team access very straightforward and, and convenient. OK, uh, I'm, I'm going to run out of time, but I'm, I'm going to just mention a few of these things. Um, who is familiar with GraphQL and, in particular, Graphical, the, the dev tooling that lets you kind of use it as a query browser? OK. Um, one of the things I want to show you is that Gatsby actually does include and use under the hood GraphQL. Uh, it, it's essentially doing some tricks because it's, it's doing all of that server side uh, statically. But what we can do is there's a Gatsby config file. Oh, ha, OK. And it has some site metadata in it because we're not using the Hello World. So there's some site metadata here that you see, a title, a description, an author. When the server is running, there's also a version of GraphQL query tools running for you that you can access. So in the same way that we have localhost running the web server for the site, we have graphical running. And this is a great tool for exploring and building GraphQL queries. So this is 
basically showing us, uh, let's start with the docs. So essentially GraphQL produces a schema of things that you can query about the collection that, of data that's being queried. And, and you have a query for a read and a mutation for a write. So here we're looking at all of the different fields that we can query. So you see there's stuff relating to images, files, site pages, et cetera, site plugins, the site itself, directory. We get a whole ton of stuff. Gatsby's using this, but we can use all of this in our site as well. Uh, so th these, these allow you to drill down and really understand how queries can be made, what kind of types can be queried. This is an interactive query tool. And so here we can look at, uh, essentially, oh, this is Markdown, but let's, let's look just at the metadata. So for our site, we have metadata. So we have an author description and title, and we can ask for that. And so this is running that query and showing us, OK, this is the, what we saw in the, the metadata configuration. Uh, the other nice thing about this is there's a code exporter. And so if we wanted to put a component together or see exactly what we would need to do, this is going to output the JavaScript for us. So we need to import React, import GraphQL. This creates a, a basic component. Gatsby has a default so that if we have a query, a GraphQL query here called query, it will automatically run that and pass that to our component via a variable called data. And then essentially all this is doing is printing that back out to the screen using a pre-tag. Um, so you get all of that essentially out of the box. Um, I think we're, we're close. Yeah, OK. So uh, what I wanted to also show you is essentially a plugin where you can read markdown files. It uses the remark library. And so you could have markdown files on your file system and be using that to publish up to and build to your static site. Uh, what I want to do also, uh, originally I had the intent of covering Netlify's identity functions. So again, serverless, Jamstack, we're serving a static site. But Netlify has a number of JavaScript-based cloud functions that you can use to add logins to your static site. And then, of course, there are things like FaunaDB and other cloud systems uh, that would let us access through the cloud JavaScript functions. And so we can have persistence of data, et cetera, image processing through AWS or you know, all sorts of those kinds of things. Um, so I'll probably come back for a part two uh, and cover all of that. Any questions? The, uh, you're all wondering. Did the site actually render? There we go. Hi, Exchange.js. All right, thank you.